Again, thanks so much for joining us. And look, welcome on behalf of the Chartered Accountants Court Society to our Getting to Grips with Your Barbecue um, series. This is the first of uh, two sessions with Dave. Dave works in the Kinsale Gourmet Academy, and he's going to take us through some lovely recipes um, between uh, today and Wednesday next week as well. So if you're not signed up for the next Wednesday session, it'd be great if you could do so. Um, he's going to develop further some recipes um, for that next week. So we're delighted to have him. Um, he's doing it live from the Pavilion Garden Centre today, which is um, looks lovely and sunny down there. So look, if you have any questions for David, please be sure to pop them into the Q&A box. Um, that's just down at the bottom of your screen. Um, he's happy to take questions throughout the session. Uh, so please be sure to pop them into the Q&A box and um, he'll, he'll work through them as we go through the hour. So Dave, are you ready to go? Yep. Super. I'm going to hand you straight over to Dave, so and um, we we look forward to seeing what you can what you come up with. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, I hope you can all hear me. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can type them in, and Diana will ask me the questions. Um, so what we're going to do today is the first week we're going to look at quick dishes, and then following week then I'm going to look at kind of the slow cooked dishes with some um, with some smoking involved. So the first thing I want to talk about is the barbecue. So we've got a gas barbecue and a charcoal barbecue. So in relation to temperature control um, and heating them up, they're slightly different. So I'm just going to go over them quite quickly. Again, when I'm teaching lessons, it's kind of an hour chat about temperature control. So I'm going to condense into 10 minutes. Um, so any questions, far away. So the first one here is uh, a spirit barbecue. This is gas. It comes with three burners, okay? Very, very easy to operate. You literally just switch on the gas and then you control the heat with the three burners. What you hear me talking about a lot today is direct cooking and indirect cooking. So direct cooking is where you cook directly over the heat and indirect cooking is where you cook, um, for example, not over the coals, okay? And I'll explain the importance of that. That's kind of the biggest takeaway today. Um, so with your gas barbecues, set up, switch them on. They all come with a temperature control. So decide what temperature you're going to cook on. So again, we're doing direct cooking today. So this guy here is up at about 250. So I'm going to be cooking nice and fast. So these are very, very self-expansory in relation to getting them hot and ready to rock and roll. The charcoal then is a different kettle of fish. Um, so to light these, obviously we're using coals. So we use Weber baguettes, okay? If you are into charcoal barbecuing, I personally prefer, I think there's more flavor and it's less maintenance in relation to keeping the barbecues clean. So what you, I would highly recommend if you do buy a charcoal barbecue, is to buy what we call um, a chimney starter. Okay, so this is a Weber chimney starter. Other companies have them, but you have to get the Weber one to work with the Weber coals. Um, so basically what we do with this guy here, is that half a chimney will give me a temperature of 180 degrees in the barbecue and a full chimney will give me a temperature of about 260, 270. Now it's up about 300 say because it's roasting in the glass house. You'll probably see me sweating, so apologies. Um, so what you do with the chimney starter is that you fill up the coals to your desired temperature. You put a little um, lighter underneath it, so you buy these little um, paraffin lighters. The coals will be ready to rock and roll in about 10 minutes. And all you do then is that you lift up your charcoal barbecue, and then with these barbecues, some of them come with, with, with um, we call them coal baskets. So there's two coal baskets. And what you do is you tip the barbecue coals into the coal basket, all right? So the coal baskets then enable you to move the heat left and right so you could create indirect cooking and direct cooking. With the gas, it's literally just turning on and off hobs. So for example, if I was going to slow cook a chicken, which we'll do next week, I will turn off the middle hob. I leave my outside hobs on. I will set the barbecue to 180, which is the same temperature you'd roast the chicken in the oven. And what happens then, because of the design of the Weber barbecue, is the heat will rise on either side, create a natural fan oven effect, and then the chicken will roast in the center. If you leave the, uh, the center burner on, what will happen is because the chicken will take an hour to cook, it will burn because that direct heat is hitting it, okay? Same with the charcoal, if I'm going to do a chicken, or a rib of beef or even a dessert, I will move these coal baskets left and right. I'll have a nice surface in the center, which is your indirect surface, and I will bake or cook items slowly in the center. And again, if I'm cooking steaks or something really quickly, 
I'll bring those baskets together and I'll cook directly over the heat. It's very, very important to remember that. Um, so with the Weber barbecues, again, the chimney starter takes all the stress out of getting the coals lighting correctly. Also with the baskets, it takes all the stress of moving the heat around, okay? Obviously with your, with your gas barbecues, there's a bit more maintenance in relation to cleaning and stuff, but charcoals are very, there's no kind of moving parts so they can't really break, which is great. Um, in relation to the coals you're using, we have baguettes, and then Weber have another one, lump wood. So with your baguettes, what you'll find um, is that it takes 20 minutes to light up, they'll stay hot for three hours and they're 100% natural. With the lump wood, it takes 15 minutes to light up. I think it stays warm for maybe an hour, hour and a half, um, and they're 100% natural as well. So they both have different cooking times and heating up times. So what I always do if I'm barbecuing is that I get my coals lighting and I go in and start prepping my food, 10, 15 minutes. Then when I come out, I drop the coals on and I'm good to go. So again, it's just the same really as turning this on to preheat. You have to preheat both of them. So um, don't be afraid of baguettes or charcoal. That's kind of the lighting and the controlling temperature. So lighten them up, indirect heat, direct heat. Indirect heat is something that you would bake in the oven at home. Direct heat is something that you cook in a frying pan. And that's the whole concept of the two barbecues here today. Any questions in yet? Perfect, brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to do two dishes using direct heat. Um, one is a steak sandwich and then one is fish tacos. You should have the recipes. Um, I generally hate following recipes except for pastry. So if I go off script, I apologize. Um, it's quite hot in here. So I'm going to start off with the steak sandwich. So what we're going to do is ingredients wise, I've got a ribeye steak. I've got some nice sourdough. I've got some, uh, these are roasted peppers from the jar. I've got some sliced onions. Um, and then for our sauce, then we're going to have some rocket and then I've got some mayonnaise with some harissa paste. So basically harissa paste is kind of blitzed up spiced peppers. So it makes kind of a spicy mayonnaise. When I'm teaching the classes, I kind of chop from scratch just to show you how quick and easy it is, but obviously we're kind of stuck for time because you're probably on your lunch breaks. Um, so what I want to do is I want to get my steak cooking. So in relation to cooking steak on a barbecue, very, very important that the steak is roughly about an inch thick. If you were to cook an eight ounce fillet steak, it's going to be very, very hard to get it nice and pink in the center because if you put it over direct heat, it'll, it'll start to brown and caramelize, but then by the time the pink the center's gone pink, it can burn very, very easily. So with an inch steak, it's ideal for getting a nice pink steak. Also as well, if you take the steak out and bring it up to room temperature, your steak will cook a lot quicker and it'll taste a lot nicer. For the simple reason, if you have a steak in a fridge, it's at probably three degrees, and then a perfectly pink steak is cooked to 55 degrees in the center. You can use the temperature probe to check that. But if you go from three degrees in the fridge and you have to bring it up to 55, it takes a lot longer to cook. Whereas this guy here now is probably at maybe 18 degrees. Yeah. And for it to go from 18 to 55, it's going to be a lot, lot quicker. So the steak cooks a lot quicker and then ends up actually being a lot more tender as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is start off, get my steak on. And then I'm also going to put my, these are just raw onion rings I sliced and my peppers. So I'm going to put them on the edge of the barbecue, just to kind of brown them and caramelize them slightly as my steak is cooking, okay? So with my steak, I simply salt on the steak, tiny bit of oil, just use like a vegetable oil or something that has a high smoke point. Don't use extra virgin olive oil because it will burn very, very easy. So two steaks here. So get these guys on. And the steaks will literally take I'd say four or five minutes, I think. Um, so with your barbecue as well, what I always do before I start cooking is we use a wire brush and I'm just going to spray the surface that we're cooking on. And that basically will kind of clean it off. Again, try to make with the charcoal barbecue. So my coals are together. I've got my grate over the coals, direct heat. So I'm going to drop the steak straight on. Like that. And then I've got my onion rings, so I'm just going to put them around the edge. 
So, some of them might fall to the grate, don't worry about it. Pepper, I'm just going to blacken that up slightly as well. This is really easy. Just drop them on, lid down. Now, a very, very important thing to remember um, is that when you're barbecuing, it's always lid down. All your vents are open, okay? The vents keep the oxygen going through, which keeps all the, the flame going, which is very, very important. And plus, with the lid down, you're creating an oven effect, and the barbecue is not cooling down. We've all seen those barbecues you buy at petrol stations, the, uh, the tinfoil ones. We see people at the beach trying to cook sausages and cold air is rushing in and it's cooling down the barbecue and you never get a proper cooking temperature. So with all Weber barbecues, all the recipes are always lid down. Keep everything in, keep the flavoring, keep the heat in. Okay, so it's very, very important to remember. So as my steak is cooking, I'm just gonna get some oil here. Tiny bit of seasoning, okay? I'm just gonna rub the oil in. We're gonna char and toast the bread slightly on the uh, barbecue again to add a bit more smoky flavor. Um, this is a sourdough bread that's made up in the pavilion by our, by our baker, Dave. So again, having a good quality bread makes a big difference. So with the steaks, I like my steak kind of medium, medium rare. If you like your steak well done, a ribeye is a great cut because it's got so much fat in it that it stays moist even when it's cooked well done. If you have a fillet steak, which is very little fat and cook it well done, it dries out and doesn't taste great. So the fat is, is, is important, especially for a well done steak. Also as well, with the fat, it'll drip onto the coals, create a bit of smoke, which gives you more flavor. So I'm just gonna turn the steak over now. You can see I've got really nice color on the steak there. Zoom it in, there we go. Yeah. Turn it over. My peppers and onions are roasting up nicely and lid back down. So to cook the steak pink, very, very simple. I'm going to cook it for another minute or two and I'm going to press it with a spoon and I'll make a little dent in the steak and that dent will fill with a little pool of blood and that's a medium to medium rare steak, perfectly cooked. If you like your steak well done, you do the same technique, press the dent, you'll see a pool of blood, flip it over, cook it for another two minutes, press it again and you should see clear liquid which is medium well to well done, okay? We teach steak classes down in um, the cooking school and basically I have to jargon on for about two hours about sauces because the steak is literally five or ten minutes of the class. Um, it's very, very simple. Uh, if you've got the right meat, bring it up to room temperature and the correct temperature on the barbecue, it's simple. So I'm just going to check it there now. So you can press it with a spoon or I can press it with my finger. So it's cooked, it's pink already. So we're going to let them rest, like so. And I will just show you there what I'm talking about. It's coming from too close now. So I'm pressing here, and a little pool of um, red liquid forming in the center. That's medium to medium rare, okay? Now, very important that you let that rest for about two or three minutes. Um, I'm just going to take off my peppers and onions and sit them on top. So if you imagine if you burnt your hand, your skin would get quite tight. The same thing happens with meat once it comes in contact with a high heat, it tightens up. So if you cut your steak before it's rested, you'll find a pool of blood um, will just go onto the plate. So you've probably seen people cooking steak in a frying pan and they cut it in half to have a look to see if it's cooked. It's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Question, actually. Question, brilliant. Temperature, do you cook steak or chicken on the bone? On the bone, indirect heat 180. Um, it depends on the. So, if you were doing a ribeye of beef, like a large ribeye of beef, I would start it off on direct heat, get it really nicely colored because it's a big joint, and then I would move the coals left and right and set it up for indirect heat. Um, and then I'd cook it to a core temperature of 55. So, good question. Um, but next week, I'll be doing. Um, Next week I'm doing smoke, hot smoked salmon and then we're going to do uh, like a beer can chicken. So the question you always say to yourself, if I was cooking the joints in the oven, you said this guy up to be an oven, indirect heat, okay? 
And temperature wise then for a large joint to be 180 to 200. And then for these guys here for quick cuts, um, like scallops or salmon, anything that's going to be nice and fast, 250, 260 is what you want. So then I'm just going to get my bread and I'm going to toast it slightly. Just drop it on. So if you're doing steaks um, for a dinner party, these two barbecues here will kind of take eight steaks, you know, um, six to eight steaks, depending on the size of them. If you put on too much, you cool down the barbecue and you won't get this nice golden color on, on the steak. It starts to stew. So pros and cons really with this one here for steaks, I'll probably get 12 on because the, whole, the heat is attacking everywhere because of the grills. With your uh, charcoal, because you only have the cooking area where the coals are, you can't really put steaks around the edges because you won't get the proper heat. So just keep that in mind. And turn the bread over. Any more questions there? No, no questions. There's a bit of noise coming in, so apologies. Good question. So there's for smoking on charcoal. What you need is who is that? <laughs> for smoking on the barbecue. So if you're going to use wood chips on the charcoal, if they're the small little wood chips, you soak them in hot water for 30 minutes. Okay, and what happens is then as they hit the coals, the water starts to evaporate and the smoke gets released slowly. If you put them directly onto the coals when they're not soaked, what happens is they'll burn. And you'll get, you will get a certain amount of smoke, but it'll go from smoke to burn smoke very, very fast. So soak them first of all, and they'll release a nice um, slow smoke, which is what we'll be doing next week. That's a good question. Yeah, so if you want to smoke on the gas one, you use a smoking box because you haven't got direct access to the heat. Whereas with this guy, you can just drop it straight onto the coals. If you're going to smoke on a, a gas barbecue, you buy a smoking box and you put the you put the chips in soaked and you just sit them in the corner and it releases the smoke slowly. Right, so I'm just going to put together this steak sandwich. So take off one of the steaks. Also, a really, really nice tip. Um, that noise again. Could be walking slower. <laughs> um, so a little tip is all your rest of juices or flavor. Give me one second there. Sorry. Um, all your resting juices are flavor. So I like to put them into the mayonnaise just to dilute them a little bit. Okay. It makes the sauce a bit more um, runny, but also just adds extra flavor. It's a shame to get rid of all that flavor. So just drop it in like that and you get um, it should take well it depends if you've brought it out to room temperature that speeds up the cooking process the thickness of the steak so one inch should probably th that guy there took about two minutes either side um, so it depends on the thickness and what temperature you started it at but the telltale sign basically is that it'll be pressing with the dent and you'll see the you'll see the blood and then you know it's cooked um, also as well like it's quite warm in the glass house. So this guy here is at 260. If I was windy and it was September, it will affect the cooking time. Proof methods basically to press, and you'll see a little dent of blood. And even if you're cooking steak at home in the frying pan, the same thing works. Um, nice hot temperature, stick it on, flip it over after two minutes, and then press it and you'll see it. So it's the same technique, no matter what the, temperature is when you see the pink it's done is that right so guys just to assemble a sandwich so i'm just gonna i personally as well only ever char the bread on one side because i don't like it too crispy so i just crisp up one side of it it's up to yourself um so i'm just going to put on some of the aioli like that we've got our roasted pepper it's going to sit on so you can see that there can you see that I'll move this down here Yes. Here, 
uh, well, Weber don't do the lava <laughs> I have to be very careful what I'm saying because this has been recorded. I think it's just an imitation, personally. It's just an imitation. I've never used lava rocks, um, but I've heard that like with, with lava rocks, because you keep reusing them, for example, if I was to cook a ribeye steak and some of the fat drops onto the lava rock and I don't clean the lava rocks properly, the fat sets, or if you were to do sausages and the fat sets, next time you come back to the barbecue and light it up, that fat can catch fire. So I don't, I don't recommend using lava rocks. Um, I'll rock whoever, just use whoever. <laughs> so hopefully that answers the question. But, um, so guys, I've got my mayonnaise on. I've got my uh, peppers, onions. I'm gonna put on some nice rocket here as well. And then I'm just gonna carve the steak. Also as well, if you're doing a barbecue, like you could do steak sandwiches for six or seven people. Just have the bread toast off beforehand, have your peppers, and then just cook, just cook the steak when they arrive. And you can feed six people quite easily um, without too much stress. So I'll sit this guy on top and then just carve it at an angle. So you'll see there the steak is, I don't know if you can see that, it's nice and pink. Okay. So that's the first dish. So it's a steak sandwich, sourdough bread, harissa aioli. Um, very, very quick, very simple. I didn't really have anything prepped, did it from scratch. So any more questions on that? Type away and I'll start. Go on to the next one. Got way behind. No, I'm not behind time. Um, I thought we finished at one. Brilliant. Ask loads of questions so I can, I, can, uh, I can keep chatting. So steak sandwich is done. So the next one, is fish tacos. So we have a few elements to the fish taco. So we have, we have a salsa and we have a, a, a spicy coleslaw. Both of these can be made in advance. And to be honest with you, they'll probably taste nicer if they're made in advance. Um, and then all you're actually cooking on the barbecue then is your fish and you're going to just um, crisp up your uh, tacos. So basically these are kids tortilla wraps or just wraps and what I do is I just I trim off some of them to make them smaller because I serve them as a starter okay um, with the trimmings then sometimes what I do is I toast up the trimmings on the barbecue and I put the true Caesar salad as croutons which is quite nice as well um, so the better wraps so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the salsa ready first and I'm going to get the coleslaw ready and then I'll talk through what we're going to do here with the fish and stuff so, um, so I'm going to make the salsa. I'm going to show you some knife skills as well. So the salsa, basically, and you have it in your recipe, we've got some diced mango. Okay, we've got some finely diced pepper, and we've got cucumber. When I teach lessons in the cooker school, I always like chefs and TV for doing this because I, I always chop everything in front of people just to show them how quick it is. But uh, I'm stressed about this today, so I'm 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 doing a doing a television chef kind of job you know, today. So here's something I prepared earlier. So onions. So I'm going to show you how to finely chop the stuff in a second as the fish is cooking. So just drop them in. And again, the this salsa will go well with the steak sandwich if you wanted to. It would go well with um, some grilled halloumi. It would go well with um, some chicken. So it can be used for anything you want. So then we're going to put in some lime juice. Squeeze it in, just to add a bit of a kick. Yeah. You put one on, so if you only have two controls, you put on one control and then you cook over this side and it's gonna create a fan effect, okay? With the spare barbecues and all the charcoal barbecues, sorry, not the, all the gas barbecues, apologies, uh, the temperature probe is kind of set, you can't move it, okay? With some of the master touches, you can swivel the lid and move it around. So if you have a two-ring burner, your temperature probe is here, turn on the get grill over this side, and cook your chicken on this side, but kind of increase to cook the temperature by about 10 degrees because it'll reach one, but it might only be 180 over. Use it with um, practice. Next week, when I'm doing the chicken, I will be using like a temperature probe 
that you plug into the barbecue and it, it basically tells you when the chicken's cooked. It's kind of a new technology Weber have brought out. Um, but again, with a two ring burner, turn on one side, turn off the other side, and that's like there's your indirect heat. Okay. So the salsa, I have uh, lime juice going in, pinch of salt, um, some olive oil is going in here, and then we've got some herbs, some fresh mint, it's quite nice, and I have actually a little bit of coriander, so I'm just going to chop that, drop it in, very, very easy. Okay, um, then we're going to do the coleslaw, so I've got some grated carrot, which I just got some carrots and just used the cheese grater on the thickest setting, and I just grated the carrots instead of finally chopping them. So if you're doing that, be careful, mind your knuckles, because you can't slip. Some York cabbage, which is just shredded up. Um, my sauce is here. So again, I've got some mayonnaise with some um, sriracha, which is this guy here. It's kind of a spicy chili sauce, which works well with the whole taco thing. So I'm just gonna put that in there. So if you're doing this for a dinner party, or a barbecue. Just do all this in advance. You can literally fish, toast up your tacos. It's very, very simple. I'm going to put some lime juice in here as well. Are they all still there? Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just don't know who's there. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to mix up my slaw like that, okay? So like a good formula for barbecuing, I think, is if you have like a carbohydrate in the form of a nice bread, so like a sourdough or a rack or a pita, then you've got some nice protein, so you can have your chicken, your meat, and then just work on like cool sauces, salsas and dips. When it comes to doing the actual barbecue itself, then you're literally meat and toasting up bread and everyone's going to think you're a legend. Um, like next week, we're going to do uh, the beer can smoked chicken, but we're going to turn it into a Caesar salad, which can serve six to eight people in a big platter. And it's, it's, it's easy, very, very simple. Um, so I've got my slaw done. I've got my salsa done. So we're going to work on the fish. So with the fish, we are going to do um, medium to high heat, which is about 200 degrees. And we're going to cook directly over the heat. Um, so this guy here, the charcoal is on 300, so I'm going to use the gas one. So we're going to do direct heat. So I have all the burners on. I'm going to set this to about 200, which is about there. Right, and we're going to cook the fish. So with the Weber barbecues, um, this isn't a sales pitch, this is a fact. They burn out amazing accessories that make your life really, really, really easy, okay? So this guy here is um, a Weber kind of a grilling rack. So what it has, it's got all holes in it. So for example, if I was to drop this fish directly onto my grill, it will cook, but some bits of fish will fall through, some bits of fish will stay on and they'll be there. And the next time we open the barbecue, there'll be bits of decayed fish hanging on of it. So when you're cooking anything that's kind of delicate, like scallops or prawns, I always cook on this and just drop it straight onto the, onto the barbecue. Um, it's easier, faster, safer, and it's less hassle in relation to cleaning up. So with my fish, I've got some monkfish here, I've got a bit of hake, I've got some salmon. I tried to get prawns this morning, but they only had frozen prawns. So all I'm going to do is I've got some lemon juice, some Cajun seasoning, and a bit of oil. So just lay your fish on. Actually, what you could do as well, which is actually a good idea, which I just thought of, is you could preheat this. Okay. If I preheat that, there's less chance of the fish sticking to it. So when you're cooking in a professional kitchen, you always heat up your frying pans, meat sticking. I have done this before in the past, and people have put the fish onto a very, very cold um, grill or a cold tray, and then the fish just sticks. So just preheat it for a couple of minutes, but you don't want any, um, any fish sticking. So cooking time on this, because the fish is quite small, you're probably looking at four to five minutes. As this is cooking, we can toast up our um, tortilla wraps as well, okay? So I'm just gonna drop this straight on to the tray now. Just a question here. Yeah. Nick just saying, I've got the same the premium that you're using there, and I love it. I like it so much for roasted peas and do a little slow cook, but I'm thinking of buying the new Kamado Weber. Just wondering if you use this part, you would recommend it over a ceramic Kamado. 
So yeah, Weber have the new, um, it's the new summit is what you said. Yeah, which is like the old summit. So the new one that's coming out, um, it's they've insulated the walls on it this time. So you're actually going to get better heat distribution. Um, it's got a better cooking grade on it as well. Um, all the Weber products will work with it. I know you can buy the Komodas, um, but they won't take the Weber attachments. So I, again, I'm a Weber man. Um, so with the new one, obviously you can still cook the same things, but the heat control is better. It's sturdier. It's got a bigger cooking surface area. It would be better for low and slow cooking. Um, you can do low and slow cooking on this, but you might have to add coals a lot more because uh, it's not as insulated. Whereas with the uh, with the Weber um, Kamada that's coming out, it's going to retain the heat really, really well. And like you might get like an eight hour, eight hour burn out of one set of coals, where this one could have to top it up maybe twice. So if you were cooking through the night, um, low and slow, the uh, the new Kamada is going to be a lot better. And I'm actually waiting to get one myself for the cookery school. Um, we use them already for training, and they're they're absolutely stunning. And again, they take all the Weber attachments, the Dutch oven, the pizza stones, the rotisseries. So I'd highly recommend getting one of them. And plus, with the Irish weather. You know, if you, I, I barbecue in the winter and sometimes it's just the weather, it could be cold outside. This takes a little bit more cold to keep up the heat. Um, whereas with the insulated Komoda, it's the heat's bulletproof. We did the training in December last year and it was really cold and the temperature control was brilliant on it. So I would highly recommend that um, if you want to upgrade. Any more questions? Okay, cool. Just take a drink of water. So, fish is cooking away. So I'm just gonna get my tap, my uh, little tortillas. I'm just gonna to toast them on the side here. I've got four of them. So we're just gonna crisp them up slightly. Um, uh, please. So have your plate here. Okay, cool. So the um, tortilla wraps, get them nice and crispy, okay? Uh, what you're going to do is get them nice and crispy. We're going to fold them and they'll actually hold their shape then um, as they kind of cool down. So you get the nice taco effect. But again, this is all happening very quick, four to five minutes. If you are um, preparing the fish the night before, you can add in the Cajun seasoning. Just don't add any lemon juice or salt because it'll actually cure the fish and dry it out. So just add them in at the very last minute. Over. Cold salt is there. I have my salsa. So for the salsa, just to go over night skills there quickly. I'll just clean down here a little bit. I'll just finish off my tacos first actually because I burned them. So what I'm going to do with these guys here is I'm just gonna just gonna fold them over like that. Just let them cool down, and they should hold their shape. Like that. There you go. Just let them cool down there slightly. So for the salsa, we finally chopped everything. Um, so just to give you just a demonstration on chopping skills. So with the pepper, when you're chopping, um, this is the hand that always gets cut. So your middle finger goes out in front and everything else is tucked in behind. And your nail on that middle finger there is kind of what you want touching off the, the, the knife. So if the knife does slip, it'll clip the nail, which will grow back. Um, so all you do then with your chopping knife is that you push down and away. You keep moving your nail back with each slice like that. A lot of people try this technique, but stick the thumb out. And I've seen people clip the thumb. So everything is in behind that middle finger. All right. So straight down like that. And if you have a chopping knife that's this shape, it's actually designed to rock. I know you might see chefs on TV do that. If you use a chopping knife like that, you'll actually blunt one end and one end to stay sharp because all this guy gets used and this one doesn't. So it's always a pushing away and slicing motion like that. The Japanese knives, which have the square side on them, they're more of kind of tapping and chopping. So just cut them into strips and then turn them sideways. 
And then same thing again, push down our way, middle fingers out in front. And that's how you finally dice the vegetables. So it's the same idea for the, um, the mango. I took strips of mango off, cut them with the fingers, dice them. Same with the onion. Um, but again, this is only like a very quick lesson just to show you the ease of the barbecue. Cool. So fish is cooked. Um, let's sit it on here. Yeah. So with your fish, a little telltale sign that it's cooked, I'll come over to the camera there. And we went on. See that? So you'll see little bits of white and milky um, substance coming out of the salmon. When it gets to that stage, it's cooked. Okay, it's a good telltale sign. Also as well, you could use a temperature probe. So fish is perfectly cooked when it hits a temperature of uh, 50 degrees in the center. And then in relation to steaks, any red meat kind of 50, 55 degrees is medium rare, 60 is medium well, 65 is well done. And then when you're cooking any white meat like steak, or sorry, not steak, chicken or turkey, it's 75 degrees. But next week I'll show you how to use temperature probes to cook the larger joints to get them right every time. So this has come out, I'm just gonna give it a squeeze of lime juice. Like that. These trays as well come on different sizes. You can get large ones to feed more people, okay? Also as well, because I um, preheated the tray, you'll probably find as well that the fish has a little bit of color underneath it, which is just it's caramelized slightly. So it's a little bit golden brown, which just adds a little bit more flavor. So when you're cooking any meat, the more color you get on it, the more flavor it has because the, the natural proteins in it and sugars and it's sweetened up. Um, so if you were to cook steak and not brown it, it'll taste, it won't taste nice because you haven't caramelized it. And a good example of this is that a slice of toast always tastes sweeter than um, regular bread because the natural sugars and proteins are caramelized. So color and um, protein adds more flavor. So just remember that. So I'm just going to build the tacos. So I'm going to put my coleslaw in first. The bottom. Just drop it in like that. Okay, put it in four. These are crisped up nicely just by cooling down. These could also be done in advance if you wanted to, and then literally you're just cooking the fish. Drop these on. Any questions there, Brian? Um, garden Center and Valley Garden. So again, we have um, a Weber store up here if you're looking to get any gear. Pop on up. The barbecue were like hotcakes this year. Everyone is barbecuing. Okay, so that's my cold sauce. I'm just going to get the fish. I'm just going to drop the fish on here. And also with the tray as well, you can pick out a bit of salmon, a bit of monk. You can give a nice selection. And then finally then, the salsa on top. And that's taco done. Tell me when, tell me when. So a really nice starter um, for a dinner party. So I'll just finish off one more. They are a bit messy, but sure, they're eating outside, so it doesn't matter. And again, the recipes, um, just because it's a barbecue, you could do these indoors as well. You could just bake the fish in the oven. But obviously the beauty of eating outside is a lot nicer, especially when the weather's good. So we're just gonna drop on this salsa here. Uh, lemon or lime juice and olive oil. Um, you should have copies of all the recipes sent to you, hopefully. Um, do the last one. Any more questions? No? Do you have Weber smoking chunks in stock in the store? All I can find locally is smoking chips with Burdabai in a shop. Sold out. We are getting delivered from Weber every day. 
yeah, there, there's just the Brexit, there's just chaos getting stuff at the moment. Um, we do have them, we have everything, but not right now. Um, so guys, that's the tackles done there. So again, four tackles, very, very quick. Um, up, up fire, there we go, side angle. Yeah. Cool. So we're ahead of schedule, that was 40 minutes. Um, I could have actually chopped that edge from scratch, from scratch, so completely, I apologize about that. Um, so in relation to what I had prepped, the, the salsa and the coleslaw stuff, I kind of had that sliced, it was just a matter of putting it together. Um, but as you can see, the fish and the steak and the bread and all that was all toasted to order. So it, it, it's very, very quick. So, this one here? Yeah, Yeah, so, We've loads of them in stock, do we? We've loads of these guys in stock. So basically, we've got the, the new Weber Spirit, um, which is a more advanced version of this. It's got a built-in um, computer system. So basically, it's called Weber Connect, which hooks up to your phone. Um, it's like an online um, cookery lesson. You can select different dishes on it. It can talk a true step. So for example, if you were cooking a steak, it would tell you on your phone once you hook it up, preheat your oven to X, set it up for indirect heat, then you would have a temperature probe that goes into the steak. Temperature probe then will tell you when it's time to turn the steak. It'll tell you when it's time to rest the steak. And it takes all the guesswork out of cooking. Um, personally, myself, for like cooking like steak and fish, it's very quick. But the larger joints, um, like if you were doing pork belly or pork cheddar, I would always use the temperature probe. Um, you know, that really is just perfectly. So there's a new product we have, and it also comes with a, a sear station, which is kind of an extra boost on, on, the, on the gas. So if you really want to brown up something very, very quickly, you can do that. Um, so we do have loads of them in stock. What? Oh yeah, it also has a propane reader on it, which is very handy. Um, so when you hook up the, the uh, to, to your bottle, the digital dial tells you how much gas you have left. So again, you, uh, you won't want it. I promise this wouldn't be a sales pitch, so that's, that's enough sales. People are asking, um, I'm like a drug dealer trying to get people barbecues, but uh, people are asking what we have in stock. We have loads of them stocked at the moment. But, um, so that's me done. Is there any more questions? I'll stay online for the next five minutes if there's any questions. Um, and next week we will be doing, um, yeah, beer can smoked chicken. I have it written down here. Uh, which will turn into a big Caesar salad to kind of serve six to eight people. And then we're going to do hot smoked salmon with some capers, a dill pancake, and some creme fraiche. And we'll finally be covering a bit more kind of slow cooking larger joints and then how to add smoke into the food. So we'll smoke the chicken and we'll also smoke the salmon. Uh, as well as, sorry, Jerry there, we Jerry. missed your question from earlier. As well as, what other states are best for so uh, I'd stay away from fillet because it's got no fat, so it dries up very, very easily, um, unless you wrapped it in pancetta to add a bit of fat into it. Um, strip loin and sirloin, I, they're, they're perfectly okay. Strip loin is going to be a bit more tender than sirloin, so when the animal is butchered, you have a large slab of meat that, that size. So the um, strip loin is kind of the thinner end, and then as it goes out, you get the sirloin. Now, I will say to be very, very careful, if you go to the butchers and you buy an eight ounce sirloin versus an eight ounce strip loin, they'll be the same weight, but they won't be the same thing because the sirloin is, is way longer. It has to, um, it will be very, very thin, which means that when you go to cook it, it can overcook very, very easy, especially if you like your meat pink. So with the barbecue and the temperature control, I kind of say an inch to an inch and a half, maybe two inches is ideal. But if you have a long um, kind of pink of steak, it will overcook very, very, very fast. So just be conscious of that. Um, so yeah, but they will work. Any more questions? That's everything. Anything to say? I'm starving. Yeah, I'm going to eat this on your behalf. So uh, not a bother. So. See you next week, same time, same place.